Welcome back to Breakfast in Barbados, right here at the beautiful Santosha East Coast in St. Andrew. And as I promised you, I have Richie Wiggins from Flawless Performance Center, and we're going to be talking health, and we're also going to be talking beauty today on Breakfast in Barbados. So, Richie. Yes. When I first came to you, I was like, seriously, I just want to go and lift some weights and get some little muscular arms and think, what's all this? But you taught me some valuable lessons about, because I'd injured my knees when I, my knee, right knee when I used to run mm -hmm. and even learning when it feels right how I'm supposed to position what center is now that was quite an interesting um, movement that you were teaching to feel your center that you was see the, the thing about it is right we are all given abilities but then because of our choice of lifestyle wearing shoes even my, it might be a genetic trait that you might pick up mm -hmm. where your parents might be susceptible to pronated feet that's something that's very common in Barbados. All it means is that when your feet touch the ground, the arch is not structurally sound. It collapses and the feet rolls, which affects your knee position. Uh, so yeah. then it tracks out of its original pattern of movement, which alters the joints, the ligaments, the tendons, wear them down and then causes injury. The other thing that has an effect upon foot and knee is again the core. So if the core is weak, it cannot functionally stabilize movement in any of those above or below structures, okay. which then over time brings on injury. Mm -hmm. And we use checkpoints uh, to assess whether or not these functions are as they should be. So the first checkpoint would be your foot and ankle as a complex, mm -hmm. knee. The hips are categorized as the LPHC, meaning the lumbar pelvic hip complex. Sounds very technical. So your lumbar, your hip, all of that comprises or comprise a complex okay. or a body of people or entities that stabilize movement. Then the other would be the head and shoulders and cervical spine and neck. Okay. So when you start from those areas and look at you, we give you some modified exercises that force a result. So in other words, it's not necessarily where you would exercise. It's modified to force you to bring the weakness to front. So okay. one of the things we would see other than the feet would be if your back arches excessively, mm -hmm. and that would denote a few things. That your back muscles are dominating for the weak core, trying to bring back structural integrity, which causes another problem, contorting of the spine. Okay, but isn't that something that we would naturally do? It's like, um, for lack of a, a better description, a person who is visually challenged. Mm -hmm. They tend to, other senses get heightened. So if you're, you, like for me, if my right knee gives problems, wouldn't I naturally overcompensate by putting more weight on my left? As you rightly know, we call those compensations. Um, mm. You are, let's look at yourself as two things, a mind operating a machine or a body. We look at ourselves in the mirror, we think we are the skin and flesh, but we are actually a mind. So if we had to hire somebody operating machinery, it, is, it doesn't matter if it's GSCB, Caterpillar, or Bobcat. It is the individual operating that machine that makes the job work well. Right. Good. Now, once you establish that part, the other factor is simply you are the perfect machine designed by God. Mm -hmm. Right? And the, the other thing to that is you were designed to produce movement at all costs. So, in other words, we talk about the car analogy. A fool runs out, the car can't go anywhere. If you put the wrong food in your car is not going to work. If you put the wrong foods in your body, it's still going to work. If you injure or lose or maim yourself, you can still produce movement. Mm -hmm. That is a superior mechanism by the, the, the like I said, the ultimate architect. Mm -hmm. So compensations are the brain's way of taking in stimulus from outside and making a change to preserve forward momentum. Mm -hmm. If that forward momentum is not interrupted and brought back to its equilibrium, then what then happens is injury comes on. Okay. So that is where the way in which we practice exercise has to be looked at differently, whether or not it's weight loss. Because, let's talk a little bit about CrossFit. That's the mm -hmm. most popular thing now. Very, very popular nowadays. I question that, whether it's safe though. Right. <laughs> now the problems with, with what happens with that is it's highly skilled, highly repetitious and it's done for speed. Mm -hmm. Exercise should be executed, executed based on risk versus the effect. So the risk I'm putting you through, is it worth the effect I'm trying to gain? Mm -hmm. 
So in other words, what we're looking at is if I put you to stand upside down and do sit-ups, is that worth the risk of you falling and breaking your head to get the result that to get stronger abs when I can make you lay on the floor, bend your knees, tilt your pelvis, tighten your core and breathe mm -hmm. and get the same effect for less risk. Mm -hmm. So are you trying to be a hero or are you trying to get your body to work properly? Okay. So let's talk about the CrossFit a little more, break it down. If you go and try to do these specialized lifts, because it has power lifting, gymnastics, and it has interval training in it, mm -hmm. right? Power lifting starts with basic lifting technique taught by via using sticks, bands, or even just hand movements to get the alignment of the bodies right, get the flexibility to release the hips where it needs for the Olympic list. Mm -hmm. Let's say you as an individual, Carol, you heard out it one day, you went to the, and you jumped three sessions in being shown how to do a clean and snatch. Mm -hmm. And that was part of your routine. If your knees and feet are not aligned properly or your core is not functioning properly, the moment you do that lift to exertion, you will injure yourself. Okay. And that is where the CrossFit risk factor comes in. Okay. Well, let me ask you a question now, because you know all those who love CrossFits have just burned you. Um, well, we, we, we have risk? some good love. <laughs> we work together, so you know. Isn't there risk in just about any form of exercise you do, whether it's, it's Pilates, whether it's aerobics, whether it's CrossFit, isn't yes. So basically at Forest Performance Center, what we do is we are psychological interventionists. We intervene and educate you in how to practice exercise okay. for the result desired, the end game being performance. So you're not saying, just to clarify, that you can't do CrossFit. You no. just need to know how, how your body functions and movement. how to do the So for example, safely. there are some CrossFit entities that take a long time where they actually put you through a learning phase where you right. learn lifting techniques. Mm -hmm. If your practitioner in CrossFit gives you a regime where we say this is the skill set program where yes, we want to lose weight, but we put you through this program where you learn the lifts. Mm -hmm. So in other words, there's time where you actually don't even touch your weight. You're practicing the technique, you're practicing alignment. They even probably have a situation where they look at posture, which is one of the things we assess. Right. Or they might look and say, well, look, let's see how you move. We need to address these things first. So you spoke about your knees. When we assess your posture, you had a whole elaborate weight loss plan. Mm -hmm. The reason that was dealt back is we realized that we needed to get your glutes, your butt muscles, and more specifically, your gluteus medius was not firing right. To stabilize the knee so we had to target that area with that band around your legs i don't think i've ever been told that my gluteus medius was <laughs> never firing right <laughs> so in other saying. words through our assessment we were able to pick out that fix that problem before mm -hmm. we started doing squats yeah before we started doing lunges remember it took us some time to do yes, that yes we did take some time so the point is we still were able to creatively get your weight down as we did that. Mm -hmm. That is the trick in how you apply exercise. Have the corrective component all the while carrying your goal or carrying you to your end goal. So it is integrative, it is progressive. If you apply CrossFit in that, then by all means, CrossFit. You're talking, I like the way you said, um, it, it's a process. Yes. It, it should be. Yes. But we live in an instant gratification society. Yes. ATM, drive throughs right. all those kind of things. And most people, I want to lose weight. Yes. I want to look like this by, you December. know, certain times of the crop year. Over, there's yes. crop over, there's Christmas, there's right after Christmas where I'm sure you're flooded, you know, when people want to take off what they've just put on. But because we live in that kind of instant gratification, are, are, are most people ready for the type of program that you have? Because all they can see is this 10 pounds later, Six pack. Mm -hmm. well, are they ready? Are, do you think that we're ready? Well, what you're talking about is the, the over commercializing of fitness. And mm -hmm. that was one of my major challenges when I made the shift to try to pioneer what I'm doing. Because what we did for the last four years was literally said, we are not practicing it this way. We are going to do a study base. So we offered everything we were doing for free based on what we call the corrective movement system, which we've okay. evolved to. So we took a functional movement test kit and implemented it as a tool to our system of operating because when we got feedback, this is the major problems we faced. When we did our medical questionnaires, we had 25 to 35 years of people who were um, 
medically challenged with different things. Mm -hmm. Dizziness of understanding, high blood pressure, uh, cholesterol, uh, diabetes, mm. and these other heart anomalies that would come up, which also affected them. So we had mm. to include that. The other factor was, how am I going to get you to buy in to this and you just want to lose 10 pounds? So we had to bring an element where it was quick, it educated you along the process, and it still brought your goal. So the thing about it is the workouts are structured. Part of the assessment is also a conversation about goal. So as we sit and go through or we stand and go through the movements, I'm getting feedback from you as to where you want to take this. Then we sit down as a core of, of, of trainers and bring our different specialties together and come up with a specialized workout that we still get you being corrective as well as progress to your goal. So for, in other words, we ma manipulate the load. Mm -hmm. We manipulate the speed at which it's done. We manipulate the time it's done. So in other words, you can do three or four or five exercises without resting. That will bring an element of cardiovascular lift. Mm -hmm. You can do a burst on a particular cardio machine for 90 seconds and still do the correct way. So the other thing is these exercises are so functional that the demand on the body is greater than your usual machine-based training. Mm -hmm. So then, in other words, if I can bring out more muscles into play, the greater your weight loss element is. Okay. So the proof in the pudding, pudding simply is that you are using more muscles in these corrective exercises than being strapped in a machine to do a leg extension or bicep curl. Mm -hmm. That is simply how we get it done without getting too deep in the technicalities of what we operate. So in other words, you go to your car and get in to put on your seatbelt. That's a lunge, a squat, a bend, a twist. That's part of I always thought it was really movement. interesting when you said that because we, we move naturally and yes. we don't think about how we move and, the, no. and, and things like that. So we talked a lot about all the functional movements and getting your core correct and all the stuff that you do at Flawless Performance Center. And of course, they're all welcome. Give me the contact numbers first of all. 437-4251 mm -hmm. is our front desk. Reception mm -hmm. would guide you anywhere you need. But it, it would be best to come in, have a look, experience what you feel in space, what you feel by conversation, and then come and try on our, our assessment. Okay. See what you get. If, if, if affording it is a problem, you can do a situation where you just consult, have us give you some findings, and we can even custom make something that you can do at home. Okay. To our assessment. You just let us know that, and we can do that. But oh, we that's are there. 437 4251. All right. Well, thank you very much, Richie. Thanks You're for welcome. joining us here. Breakfast in Barbados. Breakfast in Barbados. Hi, do you want to win $500 just in time for Christmas? Well, watch Money Matters TV show every Thursday at 802 on CBC TV 8, repeated on Sundays at 4 p.m. All you have to do is watch for the question of the day and text the word money plus the answer to short code 2216 for your chance to win. Text as many times as you like, whether you're with Flow or Digicel. Happy texting and good luck. Hi, my name is Chef Peter Tosh. Hi, I'm Chef Nikita. And I'm Chef Dario. And we're going to be at Barbecue Fest Barbados. Here at the beautiful Bellevue Plantation. So just come on out on the birthday of Barbados, 30th of November. From 12 p.m. until 6 p.m. It's going to be a fantastic day. We're going to have a great lineup of chefs. We invite everybody from Barbados to come and enjoy the festival. Many years ago, on an island surrounded by sea, warriors and kings ruled this sacred land. Once upon a time, in Ichi After the death of the cave master, a student of the cave temple is banished and is left alone to survive in the master gully. Master is dead! Gone! We must avenge his death! Yes! Jimmy Yang must pay! Ah! But this time, Yed is not alone and ready for an ambush and the battle of his life. An action-packed story of betrayal, a manhunt, a battle among brothers, and forbidden love. I 
love you, Shenzhen. Shh, what is this? Silent! L and Bear. L and Bear. L and Bear. L and Bear. How do you L and Bear? Take a moment to L and Bear with your options of Yago, fruits, and 0% fat yogurts made from real milk using real fruits. Distributed by Supreme Distributors. Breakfast in Barbados. Welcome back to Breakfast in Barbados. And this is our beauty segment. And who better to talk beauty with than the two ladies who did this? They're from Color Coded. It's Shanta and Faith. Hi, ladies. Hi, nice to meet you. Let's talk about Color Coded. Um, it's a group of how many makeup artists? About seven, mm -hmm. seven to eight makeup artists. So how did it start? Um, well, the co-founder and uh, the person that works with her that started it, the girl Danielle, she was, uh, she is a graphic artist, and they used to do makeup for friends when they were going out to the shows or whatever. Okay. And then LaShawn decided, look, it's time we get serious with this thing, and they started in 2010. Mm -hmm. Was the first girlfriends at school. I was there. Um, I started as a model for them. Okay. And now I'm training to be a bigger artist. <laughs> I guess that's what we call it. So basically, that's how it started. Okay, so you started as a model. Yes. So when did you decide, okay, I want to go from model to artist? Um, I didn't kind of have a choice, okay. really. Um, it started when they did makeup for Kaduma, mm -hmm. like four days. It started with four days, and I um, became interested in doing the gems bedazzle the faces after they finished so that's where it started then i was like you know what it's time that i get um more acquainted with doing eyes and eyebrows and that kind of thing and then after being a model for in 2000 and thing i think it was just time to do it okay so faith how did you get started with the whole makeup industry okay. my story is a bit different to hers i actually came on at the same girlfriend expo but in 2013 mm -hmm. helping LaShawn because she just asked for extra help and I will say that I'm very, very interested in anything, anything could learn. Okay. So when LaShawn approached us and she asked, she was like, well, we're looking to expand the business. Would, how would you feel um, just learning the skill? I'm like, sure, that's another skill I have. So basically, no makeup, not makeup experience, but makeup artistry type experience before no. that? Okay. Well, that's more, I never even wore makeup before. We were actually right. tomboys. Here's your sister. <laughs> <laughs> so a tomboy doing fabulous makeup. Yes. Are people surprised when you say that? I turn me yeah. My friends were actually surprised. My best friend actually said, who thought you would be the person that would come to do my makeup? To do mm, did they trust you at first? Tomboy turn <laughs> makeup artist? Seriously, did they trust you? They were skeptical at first, I mm -hmm. believe it. But now I'm doing her makeup for a wedding <coughs> coming up. Wow, that's yeah. fantastic. Let's talk about color coded and apart from like makeup, mine, you know, for shows like this, mm -hmm. what other um, events do you do or specialty events that you do? Uh, we offer makeup for graduation. Even if you want to just go a, a night and look extra special, it could be dinner, it could be going partying, something. We just offer it. So whenever you need makeup, just call us. I was just going to say we also do one-on-one -on -one courses, classes, we offer... Um, you do classes as yes, well? Yes, we do. So basically, if I needed to learn proper makeup skills, I'm not talking about your level. Okay. Because I don't think I have the patience for that, <laughs> you know. If I just wanted to learn the little skills to help me feel a little better about putting on my makeup, is that yes. something we just call and... Yes. Yeah. And actually, if you, if you think you're good enough for your brows and you just want to learn how to contour your face, we have... A course for that. <laughs> if you just want to do eyes, we also have a course for that. So we cater to what you want. Okay. <laughs> I'm not good enough with my brows. I don't, I, I don't know. You learn. I didn't know that brows could be so much work, but the end that. result, absolutely beautiful. Fabulous. No, Shanta did my makeup today. Okay. You just came <laughs> in. <laughs> you just came in and mm -hmm. it seemed like you knew exactly what to do. Do you like look at the person and already in your head your little color wheel is going um yes um how we basically um 
I guess, decide which to use is the person's undertone. Mm -hmm. They have the yellow, the reds, and so forth. The neutrals. And right, the neutrals. Um, for you, I would say you're a yellow undertone. So am I. So you know? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, you use the word warm if you oh. feel warm works for me. Right, warm. warm rather than yellow. And it seems strange. I'm saying that because for years, mm -hmm. one of my nicknames is Reds. Oh, you know, the people always tell me, "Oh, you're a red girl," and blah blah blah. And people call no. me Red. So I'm you're thinking, yellow. if I had an undertone, well, I'll not red. go with yellows. I'll yeah. stay with red. But that's my <laughs> undertone. A nice yeah. warm undertone. There you go. I'm warm. Yeah. yeah. So basically, that's how we choose the foundation comes in palette palettes like that warm mm. neutral or whatever the case to be and I had to use a warm palette for you which had like a wide variety of yellow undertones to use and basically my method of doing it may be different from faith what yeah. I usually do like I would just hold up the palette and look at you and try to guess which of the foundations are closest mm -hmm. to your skin tone and then just work from there and if there's not a <laughs> and if there's not <laughs> If there's not a foundation And this has been going on all day. <laughs> trust me, they have the most amazing rapport. Go ahead. Right. If there's not a foundation that exactly matches with you, mm -hmm. you can mix. You can have blend fun them. in mixing them. Okay, to get it's never good in art, so forget it. To get your actual color. Okay. So it would not be a case where I put on something and it looks like very orange and I leave it. Mm. I don't know that. Okay. Right. So basically that's it. Okay. Breakfast in spices have been flavoring the pots of Barbadians for over 25 years. Available island-wide at all eating supermarkets, MIS spices come in a wide variety of flavors like black pepper, Cajun spice, bacon bits, crushed chili flakes, coriander powder, cumin powder, curry powder, basil leaves, celery salt, and blackened spice. Celebrity chefs and mixologists use MIS spices to enhance the flavor of their creations. MIS products, making it special for you, for you, for you. Hi, my name is Chef Peter Tosh. Hi, I'm Chef Nikita. And I'm Chef Dario. And we're going to be at Barbecue Fast Barbados. Here at the beautiful Bellevue Plantation. So just come on out on the birthday of Barbados, 30th of November. From 12 p.m. until 6 p.m. It's going to be a fantastic day. We're going to have a great lineup of chefs. We invite everybody from Barbados to come and enjoy the festival. Hi, do you want to win $500 just in time for Christmas? Well, watch Money Matters TV show every Thursday at 802 on CBC TV 8, repeated on Sundays at 4 p.m. All you have to do is watch for the question of the day and text the word money plus the answer to short code 2216 for your chance to win. Text as many times as you like, whether you're with Flo or Digicel. Happy texting and good luck. So let me ask you, um, like, as I came in, I didn't even wait for you guys. I just said, listen, I want to look like me. Mm -hmm. Do you ever have really difficult people to work with? They want this, they want that, and you know it's not going to work. How do you deal with that kind of person? Um, okay, for instance, we had a client who did not make blush. She was like, you could do my foundation, you could do my powder, but don't put the blush on me. That's mm -hmm. just exactly how she said it. What we did was that we took a highlighting powder mm -hmm. and a, a more brown tone mm -hmm. brush. And while she thought we were putting on the powder, we just sneaked it in there. So <laughs> when she looked at, that's the truth. So when she looked at the picture, she said, oh my goodness, this is so great. 
but she didn't know that she was wearing the blush. Did you tell her? No. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, I guess professional secrets. All right. Yeah. We don't. We don't have much time. So, let me ask you about this. For the inexperienced person like myself, who really isn't into a lot of makeup, but is really, really glad that you did it because I think I look great. Thank you very much. I feel yeah. pretty. <laughs> tell me how you would take. What's like a simple, simple stuff that the average woman can have? What should she go into her makeup store and buy that isn't this? Because this is overwhelming to me. I probably have two brushes. <laughs> One to do the thingy, blending thing, mm -hmm. which I don't even blend. I just use it to put on some stuff. And something for my eyeshadow. That's it. That's it. But going for the average woman, what should she have? What would you recommend? I would that first have? say that she start with a very good skin regime. Because don't care what you do, how good you are at makeup, if your skin is not on Perfect. par, mm -hmm. your makeup will never look how you want it to look. So that's the standard that's cleanse, cleanse, tone, moisturize. Yes. <laughs> okay. So after that step, no, it depends on what you as a person like. Mm -hmm. If you just want a nice clean face, you just need a what we would call a powder <laughs> foundation. Mm -hmm. You just pat it on, you go ahead. Okay. Um, the brush for that would just be a normal powder brush or a powder puff. puff. Mm -hmm. And let me say here and note also, when you're using these brushes, wash them every time. I have actually had clients who never washed their brushes before. They just... Wash them every time? Yes. 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 Sanitation is very important because... But, you but wait a minute. In, in our defense, if you're the only person using the brush... No. Regardless, you need oh. to wash the brushes. Correct. I've washed the puffy things. You wash your Everything. brushes. Everything. <laughs> Everything, yes. That, so you need a proper brush then because some brushes will probably um, disintegrate after a while. There's a certain way to wash the brush. Mm -hmm. You hold you hold the brush like right here because if the water gets down between there then it would fall apart. Right. So you hold it here and you put the soap in the oh, center. Yeah, you can use shampoo, a okay. mild, a mild shampoo, okay. and put it in the center of your hand, and just dip the brush in it like that, and do it like that. But all the time you're holding here, and the water is running there. Okay. And when you're finished, you can just take the bristles and do it like that. We squeeze out the excess of water water and just put it down. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Never so washing your brush isn't hard. So you Never can wash that. it every okay. time. Okay. Cool. Um, get a lipstick if you like lipsticks that you know you will wear every day. Mm -hmm. Don't go buy a whole palette and then realize. Oh, I just want that one. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, a nice eyeliner. And you should be cool. All right. So let me, one more thing. Taking me from a day look to a night look. If I have that, you know, just my usual little foundation, mm -hmm. some powder, lipstick, mascara. That's probably as far as I will go. Okay. But then I have to stay at work and I have a function in the evening, a mm -hmm. nice little cocktail or you're going out clients for, for dinner or something like that. I don't have enough time to go to call color coded, which is probably the best thing for me. <laughs> what can I do with my makeup that's simple, easy and take me from day to night? Well, for your day, look, in the office, you will not have an eyeshadow or a lip color that's popping, but you will mm -hmm. have on your foundation the whole day, mm -hmm. your powder, whatever the case may be. If you're going out the nighttime, all you have to do is add color in the V, the crease area. So that's and, right here? Yeah, yeah, right there, and just darken it. That's all you do. And then you can change your lip color to probably something brighter, mm -hmm. depending on you, something brighter or whatever the case may be. Um, get the pow your powder and just freshen it and go. That's Fantastic. all it is. Just add a color to the crease, darken it, change your lip powder, and go. Well, thank you, because oh, I thought smile. you had to... <laughs> Take everything off and start building again. No. Oh, and you said what? A, and smile. a smile. You need a smile. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Thank you very much, ladies. Yeah. yeah. And how can we reach Color Coded? You can find us on Instagram at Color Coded Makeup. Mm -hmm. We are also on Facebook, Color Coded or Color Coded Makeup. You could call one of us. Um, one of the C CEO's number is 269 6838. Her name is LaShawn. So I'll just give you this card right now. Oh, thank you. I'm sure I will need it. Well, thank you very much, ladies, for joining me this morning and making me look absolutely fabulous. Yeah, every day. That's it for Breakfast in Barbados for today. Bye-bye now. Morning's here, not much time.